Like you and I, a horse's physical condition changes day to day. The horse communicates that condition to you if you understand what he's saying. And you begin to understand with this free online webinar. Once you understand, you're going to win more and even more importantly, lose less. Join the free Racehorse Body Language webinar. Learn Handicapping's missing link and win more and lose less. And you get instant access when you go to bodylanguagewebinar.com. Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, taking a look at race number nine at Saratoga on Friday. It's the $200,000 Fleet Indian Stakes, one of a slew of stakes races on the card, a card which you can bet with the DRF Bets account. Sign up at drf.com forward slash bet and receive 10 times your sign up bonus. Here's the field for the Fleet Indian going a mile and an eighth for fillies and mares. These are New York breads running for $200,000. Matt, let's start with the number three split time going out for the always dangerous trainer, Linda to Rice. All this filly has done is won five of her last six races. She has never lost a route race in her career, and she handled two turns with no problems in her most recent start at Finger Lakes. All she did in that race, the New York Oaks, was beat five of these common rivals. Yeah, and really, that's kind of what it boils down to. Do you think that there's a scenario where there's a different horse that can upset her? Because if you think it really just boils down to that New York Oaks, I have a hard time imagining split time not getting the job done. You brought up the two turns, not a problem for her. I guess the only other concern that I would have for her at this point, she's gone out seven times. She's never been out of the money. She's won five of them. She's not getting any sort of real improvements as far That's as the speed figure standpoint is concerned. She just sort of mired in that mid-70 range. That's true, uh, and we have seen a couple of other horses in this race that have exceeded her best buyer speed figure, but there is something to be said from consistency. Never off the board from seven starts. As I mentioned, she beat five of these last time out. She beat two next out winners, and a horse that didn't win just missed in a turf stakes race with a 79 buyer speed figure. The one purely lucky is five to one on the morning line, despite having never won a race on the dirt. She's done most of her damage on the turf, but there's one thing that we know. She likes this distance. And really, distance could be the key to this race. Yeah, no question about it. And like you say, the distance isn't a problem for her. She's actually getting a slight turn back going from a mile and a quarter to a mile and an eighth. And you know what? I understand her form on turf, I think, is a little bit better than it was on dirt. And Brad Cox, I trust in an instance like this. He's got very, very good numbers. When you just take a look at them, pretty straightforward. He's about 30% for the past year. You get Javier aboard. If you think there's going to be pace, she's probably going to come with a run. That would be my only other concern. I don't know how close she's going to be. I wonder if she gets a little bit outpaced early on. The last time she raced on the dirt, the last two times she raced on the dirt, she was defeated by the number 11 English Soul, who Timeform US projects to make the lead despite breaking from a tricky outside post position. Let's throw up that Timeform US pace projector for the Fleet Indian Stakes. English Soul got involved in the pace in the New York Oaks last time out, and I thought all things considered she ran okay, even though she's an English channel. I'm not sure she really wants the mile and an eighth, especially if this pace scenario is correct. And you're not sure this pace scenario is correct. No, I, I think she's the one that goes, but I don't know how fast it's going to be because unless you really think there's just going to be a number of horses, two or three of them, as time form has suggested, that are intent on getting the lead, I think most people are going to be looking at it. I shouldn't say most people. The horses that figure to be forwardly placed, the connections, look at it and say, kind of similar to what you're talking about. With English Soul, I'm not convinced she wants a mile and an eighth. Let's let her go, dictate the pace. If we sit just off, we could probably inherit this thing turning for home. And if you don't go too fast, I understand you don't want to bring the closers into it too early. I just kind of feel like this is going to be more of a moderate pace than anything. One of the horses pushing the pace on the projector is the 10, Pas de Deuce, a beautifully bred daughter of Curlin, making her third start of the form cycle. Perhaps most importantly, she has already raced at this mile and an eighth distance, and she was far from embarrassed in that spot against a field of older horses. The one thing that's concerning for Pas de Deuce is she's yet to run that fast race, but she is so lightly raced that a forward move could be coming. I don't think she'll be as close to the pace as Time Form US has her, and she's got a shot to crack the, the board at a decent price. Yeah, if, if you think she's just kind of that one-paced, grindy type, then certainly she's got a chance to hit the board. I agree with you, though. From a pace standpoint, I realize she has a bunch of red sort of pace numbers and pace running lines throughout her entire career, but I just, 
I, I can't imagine her being that forwardly placed. I also don't know how good she actually is. The winner of that most recent start, who she was really no match for at the end of the day, all she did was come back and earn a 64 buyer. So I think she's a little bit light, a little bit cheap as far as the company is concerned. And I don't view her as really one to push the pace. The nine Indies lady, a multiple stakes winner sprinting at Finger Lakes, tried the two turns in the New York Oaks, was far from embarrassed in her first race around two turns. She is a filly that is slowly embracing this mid-pack running style, but if Arad Ortiz wants to be a bit aggressive and get closer to the pace, he can do so. Indy's lady, she earned a 70 buyer speed figure as a two-year-old and is yet to get back to that number. And I guess that's sort of the concern. It feels like she just sort of plateaued. Now, maybe she'll really appreciate second time going long, but at the end of the day, I kind of look at her and say maybe a minor award is her ceiling. Held accountable. Couldn't really find the excuse last time out going six furlongs. There was a hot pace. She was four to one. She really didn't pick up her feet that day. The last time she ran a mile and an eighth, well, the only time she ran a mile and an eighth, we can throw that race out. She was in against Wonder Godot in the grade two Demoiselle. Something tells me that this distance is going to be okay for her. And with three sprint races under her belt this form cycle, she might be legged up for a surprise performance because she was okay at two. Yeah, I've always been a little bit of a fan of hers. I think Phil Serpy does a good job. To be honest with you, I'm not totally convinced. And I know she's run on the main track five times in her seven lifetime starts. I'm not totally convinced that this is the surface for her. I'd like to see her get back to turf at some point. You'll note that she broke the day, uh, broke her day, broke her maiden in her debut. Boy, that's a mouthful. And I understand that most recent time that she tried the turf. Keep in mind, that was off of a little bit of a layoff. I kind of feel like this might be an instance where if she doesn't run well here on Friday, you get her back to the grass. I'm not going to hold our Supernova's New York Oaks debacle against her. She had some trouble in that race. Her prior effort, her first race around two turns this year resulted in a 62 buyer speed figure win as the favorite and it was a solid looking performance but split time beat her in the Maddie May earlier this year and again I think that split time might be slightly better you get a price on this one though yeah and unfortunately I just don't see any sort of real big forward move here I understand like you say two starts back she kind of flourished a little bit earned that 62 she's going to need to earn at least that if not 10 points or 15 points higher to re really be a threat in here Aunt Babe the number five is an overachiever she's a multiple stakes winning daughter of Desert Party who just got buried in the New York Oaks last time out um, I think she's more of a late running sprinter seven furlong miler than a true mile and an eighth horse yeah, I agree. And, and to be honest with you, she's not fast either. I mean, through 11 lifetime starts, a career best buyer 70. I don't think it's fast enough. Cause we are loyal, won at Saratoga last year. Perhaps that's an important spot. She was completely overmatched last time out. I mean, boy, she was in against La Moneda and War Canoe on turf. Throw that race out. Her prior races are okay. Again, just a little slow on paper. Yeah, going to need to take a step forward. The interesting thing here will be to see what happens first time going two turns. Maybe she will be the kind of horse that appreciates going to kind of grinding along. Let's take a look at our top selections for the $200,000 Fleet Indian Stakes. You like the seven, Rachel's Blue Moon. That's my second pick in this race. I had a lot of trouble separating the two and the seven. Let's talk about Rachel's Blue Moon. She ran fast last time out, according to Timeform US, and kept right on going. Yeah, she certainly did, and she beat a next out winner in Pink Twist, and I know I already spoke about Pink Twist earlier, but at least coming out of that race that day, she came back and earned a 72. I just kind of feel like from a pace dynamic, if you think the outside horse, English Soul, is going to be sent out of there to try to go to the front, I think there's a real scenario where Rachel's Blue Moon, you saw in that career debut, she was willing to sit and make up ground and pass horses. If you let the outside horse clear off, you park just off if you're Luis Saez, I don't think the distance is going to be an issue for her. Now look, maybe it will be because she's never gone two turns in her career, but I just think she could work out an ideal trip in here. And I suppose there's a scenario where if for some reason English Soul is not sent from the far outside, based on that most recent running line, I wouldn't be terribly disappointed if Luis Saez said, you know what, we're going to go on with it. If you don't want it, we'll take it and try to wire the field. Take charge, Aubrey. My top picks look good in two out of her last three races. The maiden win came by a country mile. She had to alter course sharply up the rail at the quarter pole and then destroyed that field. Last time out, they turned her back to seven furlongs. I don't think there was a lot of pace in there. They stopped the half in 47. She came from off of it to win by four lengths. I'm a little bit concerned about the mile and an eighth for her. I think that she's kind of bred, at least on the bottom, to be more of a sprinty type. And she is coming back on short notice. But I like that 75 buyer effort over this track last time out. And I think that if there is some pace in here, it might set things up for Take Charge Aubie. The price right on the morning line, 6 to 1. 
Yeah, and with the stretch out and distance again, I think she's going to be a little bit closer to the pace. I don't think she's going to be up there pushing it, but I think she could work out a really nice spot in here. And really, it does. It boils down to distance because from a speed figure standpoint, she is one of the few horses in here that's run moderately quick. Let's take a look at your top four. Give them out to me. Going to go 7, 3, 1, and 11. I'm going 2, 7, 3, 11 in the $200,000 Fleet Indian Stakes, race number nine at Saratoga on Friday. Better with a DRF Bets account. Sign up, 10 times the bonus, bet 20, get 200. All the info at drf.com forward slash bet. Approximate post time for the Fleet Indian, 549 Eastern. Good luck.